welcome, welcome, welcome to the Comic Corner. I'm your host, Damon Gray, and today we welcome a duo who came together to tell a story. We're going back to our grassroots. We welcome Alex Robna, Matt Stevens from the Digital Pools. Guys, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Alex, how are you? Good. Good. Thanks for having us on, Damon. Appreciate it. No problem. We got a... We're, we're all boom tubers here in Connecticut. This is kind of like a, an origin of everybody. We're finally all coming together. It's a uh, an Avengers assemble type of moment for our comic book owner, <laughs> Dan, who's awesome. So this is this is fun. We've been talking about doing this for a while and it finally came together. But I want to know both of your comic book origin stories. As fans, how did you two get into comics? Yeah, sure. So I, I could start. Um, you know, I still remember picking up um, the car, uh, uh, an uh, issue of uh, Spider-Man, uh, the the Amazing Spider-Man, when I was like five or six years old. That was like my first real comic book purchase, at least through my mom. I was like, "Hey, mom, I want this comic book," and uh, and so she she bought it for me. But I, I don't think I really got into comic books or reading, uh, you know, graphic novels until college. I, I'd say uh, I had a really good friend I work with, John. Um, who was kind of like my mentor during, at my first internship, and he was a big comic collector. And so he was like, hey, you should check out these books. You should check out this uh, great run of, like, Birds of Prey, for instance. So I, I had, like, Gail Simone's, like, first, like, first you know, whole series through Birds of Prey. And, you know, I was reading that. I was always a DC kind of guy. I always liked Batman, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, Neil Gaiman and I think Alan Moore were, like, really the ones I was really hooked into because – I love their, at least Alan Moore's narrative style. I, I kind of like that. Um, it's, it's been inspiring for me a little bit on the digital pool side too. It's more long form, but um, yeah, I'd say Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman stuff. A lot of the dark horse style stories are a little bit non superhero mm -hmm. stuff. I, I was really uh, that that really piqued my interest, um, and yeah, that that pretty much stuck until today. So I still read still read superhero books. I'm still a little biased. I, I like DC more, more than Marvel. I, I love I love Batman. I would love my chance to write a Batman Beyond story maybe at, at, at one point. But um, for right now, it's a lot of non-superhero stuff uh, for me. So Nice. Matt, what about you? Oh, gosh. My first comics were uh, Star Wars comics, like probably 1979. Uh, they, Marvel came out with you know the the original Star Wars maybe maybe it was eighty, um, but they were great. They were so cool, and I had I don't I think I have them anymore. But they were just so well drawn and like big, thick chunky black ink lines, you know, printed on that old crappy uh, you know newsprint paper, and just it, those were my read a hundred fifty times comic books. You know, didn't understand the comic book value or anything like that. Um, but it was just the thing. I, I just read them over and over again until they were tattered and worn. Um, and then, you know, in high school, uh, we had a comic book shop, not in our town, but we, we would go into uh, into the city about a half hour, take the bus in and make a whole day of it. Uh, Starship X, Excalibur was the name of it. And, um, you know, just kind of fell in love with the whole whole idea of a, store full of art and stories that you could just kind of pick off the off the um shelf and try it out and see 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 what was in there and i was a big daredevil fan i had a huge uh, daredevil collection for you know years and years i tried to do the completionist <laughs> it did not happen but i got you know i got about halfway there um so yeah and, and uh, you know have stayed with it on and off ever since I've leaned more into uh, trades than floppies in the, the past couple of years, but just always, yeah, always buying stuff. Did you have a favorite run at Daredevil? So I got into it uh, slightly after, gosh, um, slightly after, no, it was the end of Frank Miller's run and got hooked in, there and then learned who frank miller was and then i just had to get everything in that in that whole run and uh i think i did i think i got all of that but that was really that was the the, the one that hooked me and brought me into dark knight you know and Ronan and all all the world of frank miller 
So I wanted to bring you in to talk about your comic that you two do, The Digital Pools. It's a cyber noir, a little crime thriller thrown in there. Uh, how did – first explain to the audience what Digital Pools is and then how you came up with this idea. Yeah, sure thing. So um, this idea has been around in my head for a long time, um, and I finally – I, I was had this idea, crazy ideas that, you know, what is the future really going to look like? It's probably not going to be run, overrun by zombies, unfortunately, you know, for, for, for those who may have stocked up for the zombie apocalypse. And, it you know, I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're going to die by Skynet either. But it's probably going to be some more of an optimistic future. But with that, like, there's a lot of cool technology on the horizon. And, and I just had these ideas regarding, you know, AI um, you know, nanotech and then just like the future of the internet, like, like, what does that look like? And so, um, yeah, I was, I had always had this concept of like, well, what would crime look like on, in like the internet of the future, especially as we talk in terms of like virtual reality and, um, and yeah, so slowly over a long time, I just kept kind of adding to this ideal pool in my head. And, and during 2019, I was like, you know what, I want to make this a, a comic book. I, I'm just going to go out there and, and, and give it, give it my shot. And that's where I met Matt. And so he was hooked on the story, and the pitch I had for him was like, you know, think of a world, future Boston, 2035. Um, the world's relatively peaceful. You have this amazing, you know, access to information. So we, I call it like the information renaissance. So people are, have open access to information. You know, uh, that's also facilitated the future inventions of, you know, complicated nanomachine that, nanomachines that run through your body that regulate, um, you know, that are more like a metabolic aid uh, at, at this point. Um, but then entrepreneurs start to mess with that and they, they figure out ways where you could use it to connect to, um, to like a virtual environment. And this virtual environment they, they create is called the Exodus. It's like the simulated world where you can be anything you want to, uh, do anything you want, um, and create anything that you want. Um, so that, that may sound good for like an artist, right? They could create finally something they create that that's within their mind, but it, it might be dangerous if you run across someone who's like, well, now I can have open access to anyone and I can do whatever I want to them, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where the story takes place. It's right on the edge of this technology, right, as it, as it begins. And, and, you know, we see it propagate, you know, throughout the entire 10-issue uh, run, how quickly it, it grows. And it's there's a lot of promise there, but the government is also worried, like, what's the stuff, like, we hear reports of people being murdered online or being stuck down into this prison where they feel it's been 30 years of torture, but really it's only been a few hours, right? And so they're just trying to figure out what's going on. And so they fund these uh, local municipalities, like the large metropolitan areas across the country. Um, ours focuses in on Boston uh, in a project they fund called the Virtual Crime Task Force. And Boston is like the hub of Exodus development. It's where the Exodus was created. And so our story kind of focuses on Rico Teller, who's a former co-founder of the Exodus. He, he helped create this network. And he's working with the Boston Police Department, um, in particular, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Detective Julio La Rosa, who's kind of on his way out in the police department. He's taken up this job as like kind of his last hoorah. He's a big time a heavy swinger in the homicide department. And he doesn't really know much about the technology but he's just he thinks it's just an easy coast downhill right into his uh, to his pension um but what they uncover is some seriously sinister stuff um you know a lot of amazing things that are happening over a very short short period of time as these new entrants kind of dive into the uh dive into the exodus and the way they connect and i forgot to mention this um i've gotten sloppy on my pitch i guess but <laughs> the way you connect to the exodus is uh, you submerge yourselves in these in these like uh, structures called digital pools. So there's conductive fluid that connects to the nanomachines running in your body. And it's this alkaline fluid that's conductive and you just basically bathe yourself in there with a, with a the oxygen line into you. And that just transports you into this virtual world. And so that's, that's where the name of the book, the digital pools came from obviously. And, and yeah, it's um, we're, we're, we just, uh, I just wrapped up issue six draft, the, um, the, uh, the the script draft from Matt and I've I've seen the first ten pages and I say this every single issue but this is like the best stuff we've made so far and it's exciting because now we've explained the rules over the world for like the first four or five issues and you know gradually let that slow crime noir story like really burn and now it's we're gonna get into the craziness and you know we're on the other half of the of the storyline so things are gonna get wild and crazy and you know, action packed. So 
I'm, I'm really excited to see where this next issue goes. Matt, when it comes to the art in this, the colors are very stark. It's a lot of purples, a lot of heavy blues that we have some really bright, vivid reds. When you're approaching the, the art on this, like what, what's your vision? Um, yeah, I, I, I've always been drawn to intense, intense colors. Although there are some, there are some scenes that are super muted and even some flashbacks mm -hmm. that are, you know, in, in uh, almost monochromatic or super, super neutral tones. But, um, you know, my, my, my approach to color is just, is very intentional. So I try to fit the fit the mood of the scene that Alex is trying to create. And I try to tell that with color. Um, and so if it's a, if it's a darker scene, I try to lean into the, the just intense dark colors. Um, I have, I have kind of this theory of color, which is, is pretty basic. It's just, I just really, every scene has three colors, um, you know, purple, pink, and then there's a, maybe let's say there's purple and there's pink and then there's maybe a highlight color of of orange that's used sparingly and it's that's where i start and then i build out from there so if you it's you know there's your cheat code if you go through the comic you'll see most scenes are you know three a, a very limited palette uh i you know i i say what i'm not going to use before i even start coloring so i could say this scene, no yellow, no green. Uh, and then that just limits me, right? And in that limitation, it, it allows me to really kind of explore. Um, so it's just always sat well with me to do that, to just to, to tell myself what I'm not going to use first, have an idea of what I'm going to use, and then lean into that, lean into those colors and really try to exploit them. That's how I think about it. What early challenges uh, for either of you when, when you first came together and you're like, we're going to make a comic together that you were not expecting? Um, I think that, so first off, I'll say uh, the, the toughest part about this is finding a creative partner where you like really jive and you can feed off each other and just frankly, just get the work done. Um, you know, I, I lucked out with Matt. Um, as any writer, I, I, I feel like Matt and I can definitely crush through work throughout the year and given our other responsibilities is, is quite an achievement that we, we do so much throughout the year. Um, but, you know, as any writer, I am a, I am a, a procrastinator. So, so sometimes it, it may take me a little while longer than I thought just because I want to make sure fine tune stuff and edit stuff heavily before I send it over. But I'd say like, that's probably the biggest challenge is saying generally, but we really overcame that from like the first, first, you know, few moments of we were working with each other. We were on the same, same wavelength about stuff. I'd say the first challenge that was unique to us was just figuring out like how are we going to get this book out to folks cuz originally we tried the the route of let's just create a pitch like a you know a simple eight page you know six panels on each page teaser of what this book might look like and we had a whole draft outline and stuff and and so we did that we went through that route uh you know we sent it off to the typicals uh, image top cow dark horse so, you know got some traction with a few with a few of them um, but they wanted to see a little bit more. But as we were kind of doing that, we were like, you know what? Like, we could create kind of our own thing here, our own imprint, and just try the Kickstarter route. We knew, like, that was really kicking off. And this was right before the pandemic hit in 2020. This was, like, late in 2019 when we started to do this. And, um, yeah, from that point on, we were like, all right, let's just try to fund this ourselves. And so that was a challenge, just to try to get the social media presence up and, like, broadcast and advertise the book. Um but we were successful. I mean, we, we kickstarted almost all, I guess, all of our issues up until the, this, this latest one, like, you know, one through five were, were all kickstarters. I'd say like the biggest challenge was just figuring it out, like how we were going to get this thing going. We knew we could, we knew we wanted to draw, we knew we could draw and we knew we could write. Um, it was just about, you know, how are we going to get all this stuff actually to the printer, right? And then distribute it out. That was, that was the key. Um, and the last person I would say that that was the missing link for that was Dan at BoomTube. Dan was the one that I still remember the call. I called him and I was like, hey, I need to come over real quick because we just printed some books. And I know I've never been to your shop, but I needed to have sleeves and backing boards. He's like, yeah, man, come on over. And then so when I, when I walked in, he's like, yeah, tell me tell me about this book. And I showed him like what the book looks like. And he's like, 
oh man this is awesome like i would love to put this on my shelf and i was like oh my goodness this is is this how easy this is gonna be and uh <laughs> but he's he's been a great stakeholder for us and i, I you know matt and i can't say uh, enough about how how good dan has been to us and others also in, in the uh in the connecticut comic community so <clears throat> what's been for both of you what's been your favorite aspect about creating the series from the ground up I mean, for, for me, I I, uh, I I really like well a couple things. I really when I get the script and I read through it, and my mind starts to visualize what Alex has written. That's a really special time because I don't know. We've had lots of conversations up to this point about what will be in it, but there are always some chestnuts in there and some some things that we hadn't talked about. So that's really fun for me to read it for the first time read that draft um that's that's very special because it's like oh there's my next three months like that's what i'm th this is the the issue that the, the that i'm going to be living in for the next three months so there's something really exciting about that for me and then the other thing is just getting um better at my craft you know I, I'm, I'm really proud of issue one um for all of its clunkiness you know there's Maybe other people won't see it, but but you know the artists and the the writer do see it. Um, uh, but it's really cool to see that evolution. And as proud, of, we're very proud of issue one, and and holds more than holds up. It's great. And seeing our evolution, uh, or I should speak for myself, of my evolution as an artist, and um, not so much in getting better at drawing, although you always level up, you know when you're when you're working on something creative but the just getting to know alex's characters which i you know i've taken ownership of now because i'm you know got co-ownership of uh just getting to know them and who they are through a, drawing you know 100 oh, we're going on 200 pages now getting to know these these characters and being able to draw them just uh fluently you know, which was not the case in issue one. I think that's that's a good way to put it. it there, there wasn't the same fluency in issue one as there is in this first 16 pages of issue six, which is, yeah, like Alex said, it's our best stuff. Yeah, it's, I, I would I would say uh, totally agree with Matt. I think the watching evolution, you know, kind of putting your, taking yourself out of your own body and watching, you know, myself like write, uh, I've gone through different um, routes for the, how to put it on paper, traditional comic script or the Marvel method, I guess, and blending some of those <laughs> in and finding out how, what method works for Matt and I, I think we're, we've, we've gotten there. And I've definitely noticed that uh, it's, it's just like work on chops for anything. Like if you play, like if you play guitar, it's just like working on your chops. You got to, you know, do, run your scales and like listen to the albums you want to sound like, you know, and, and start playing those riffs, right? The same thing for, for, for my writing, like I've, I've been reading more too, which is great because that's that's a great cauldron to kind of get inspiration from. So I've got the, my set, you know, prose authors that I, I read. I'm a big hard science fiction guy. So I've been reading a lot more books, but I've been reading a lot more comics as well, just to get the contemporary inspirations too and see what other folks are working on. And yeah, I, I think the last thing too has just been, now that we have our world out there and it's, it's out there for everyone to see, we know where it's going too. And it's just, it opens up into this, you know, it's a whole universe. Um, it, it really is a whole universe. We're excited to see to, for our partners that we're working with now to kind of bring that into fruition. And, and now we have all these friends that we've met too, like the fan, people who are fans of the book, people who are other creators and, you know, but it's just good to, it's good to have to take a chance and put something out there, meet, meet someone like Matt and like, you know, your creative drive, just kind of keeps growing you know over the years and so that i think that's something i've been really proud of every single year we have goals you know we may not reach all of those goals but we're always kind of on like an upward trajectory um yeah and i think this is going to be our best year yet for sure well you mentioned that the world's growing has become a whole universe and the digital pools have gone digital you've joined the macroverse uh, you want to explain what that is yeah yeah, sure, Matt. Do you want to you want to try to explain? Yeah, why don't I why don't I start off and and you can maybe you can fill in fill in the gaps. Um, so we we've okay. partnered with uh, a company called Macroverse, 
uh, which makes uh, digital comics. They have a, a digital comic app, um, Macroverse, and um, they have a really unique way of presenting uh, uh, visual stories called the Tap Story. So you, um, it's a really simple interface. You know, it's on your phone. The, the, they're called episodes instead of issues, um, and they're s slightly shorter. So you can imagine one issue of a comic would be maybe broken into three episodes, but uh, they're designed to fit on on a, a mobile screen, and the interface is really easy. You just tap on the right hand side of the screen to move the story forward, and tap on the left hand side to to move it back through the through the panels. And um, it's amazing how immersive that is. That when you're in control of the pace and uh, how much you want to linger on each panel and you can replay a scene just by tapping forward and back. So that's, that's the interface. Uh, that's the app. And it's really fun. Um, they have, it's a much larger conversation, but they have uh, a lot more that they're going to be rolling out in the next four to six weeks um, with uh, that. We're a part of uh, where they're going to be introducing worlds and digital pools is going to be one of these is one of these worlds. Um, and you, a good way to think about it is like a playground. So Alex has written the core digital pool story, 10 issue series. Um, but we're going to be introducing an, an anthology series uh, that we're going to ask the community to write. So people are going to be pitching stories to Alex and I, um, we have a show Bible, we have a world Bible. It, it basically gives you the rules of what what the digital pool story is. So a great way to think about it is uh, Alex is writing the Star Wars core story and we're inviting people to write the Mandalorian and Boba Fett and Star Wars visions and all, you know, and, and those stories that will be canon, but will be parallel stories to the core story. So shout out to all writers and artists um, that, that, you know, uh, within the next four to six weeks, these worlds are going to start to open up to the community and we're going to be asking people to submit, submit stuff. And, um, and Macroverse, uh, with, you know, is going to be producing these comics, which then will get um, released on their, on their site as, you know, parallel stories to, to digital pools. So when we say the digital pools universe, it really is going to be a universe of many stories inside this it nested inside Alex's core core story. How'd I do Alex? <laughs> no, okay. no, no, that was perfect. Yeah. I would say that the, the only thing to highlight would be like, it's, it's for aspiring artists and writers too. So it's, it's the fans who, who are into this story or they happen to come across a macro. So, Hey, this is a kind of a cool concept. Um, you know, and they, you get to create your own character and kind of, live within this world you can live passively by just reading the stuff or like matt said if you have a crazy idea for your character that you know um like what are these people dreaming of when when they submerge themselves into their digital pool right what what was your character thinking when when he's off into his his or her playground right within within the exodus within the exodus simulation you could write that story right and then, then you could pitch it to us and then we'll give you the tools to help bring that story into fruition by matching you up with an artist and then, yeah, it's it's a really cool concept. And the best thing is then once you create this character and you've created this IP, like you own that IP, and then you also get the financial benefit from it too. So every time someone taps with that story or they're looking on the Macverse stuff, you're also getting, you know, some financial incentive from this. And so their Macverse, I would say, is just very focused on um, independent creators and just the community that, they're, that they bring with them and uh, that the community that they that they grow, I guess, on their platform. So it's it's a win. There's not a lot of win-wins in the world, but this is, this is definitely a win-win. It's very important these days for creator-owned projects to be successful, not not just, you know, for whatever publisher they're going out, but for the creators themselves, right? That's where the whole creator-owned project comes from. It seems like the Macroverse is a great option for anyone joining that. Uh, what advice do you have for any aspiring writers or artists who want to, do what you guys do and make their own comics. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, uh, I guess from, from like a writer's perspective, cause I still, I mean, I'm still a new writer. Um, I, 
you, you just got to do it. I mean, you just got to write. Uh, it's you could think about writing all day, and you could tell people, "Hey, I have this idea. It's going to be X, Y, and Z." But really, until it's on paper, it doesn't exist yet. Um, you know, because you need to, you, like we were talking about, kind of practice those chops. So, and don't be afraid. There's plenty of tools out there. There's plenty of resources out there. YouTube offers great. You know, you can listen to some of the best folks, screenwriters, prose writers comic book writers, they can tell you like how they got into the business or they can tell you how they got into the craft. There's a lot of resources there to listen to. Um, but until you put your fingers to a keyboard or if you if you really want to torture yourself, put a, a pen to paper uh, and start writing your manuscript that way, I, I applaud you for that. I don't envy <laughs> you. Uh, I would say that, that that's really the only way it's going to happen. That, that, that'd be the best advice I could do. You just got to do it, you know? Yeah, I would, I would echo all, all yeah. that, uh, you just got to draw for as an artist you have to draw every day it's just it, you have to develop that um that routine and you just have to it, it can't really be a, a choice it has to just be a thing that you do every day and once you you know it's it's a little hard to get there but when when you get there and it's just a thing that you do every day it's amazing how how quickly you level up and We've all, you know, drawing is a skill, writing is a skill. Um, I don't, I don't think that, you know, certain people have talent and certain people don't have talent. I really just think you have to have the interest and then you have to devote, devote the time to it. And, and you can, you can definitely, yeah, that, that, that's the secret. I don't worry about style, what your style is and draw looking like this person or writing like that person. Um, I don't, I think that's putting energy into some, in, into the wrong, into the wrong avenue. I think just doing it, just doing it every day and, you know, leaning into the things that you like you did and then steering away from the things you, 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 you don't like that you did. Nice guys. Thank you so much for taking the time. Where can people find you on the internet these days? I know there's like a bajillion different social media outlets now. <laughs> Matt, let's start with you. So, uh, I, the, you know, the place you can find uh, our work, I think, is the Macroverse app. We have um, our one of our nested anthology stories called Deep in the Exodus, which is a, one of our parallel digital pool stories, uh, is on the app now, and it's being released weekly. And then Digital Pools is going to be released uh, weekly starting in late August. So that, to, to look at this work that we've been talking about, that's a great place. Um, Twitter, I'm at Matt Stevens now. Instagram, I'm Matt Stevens Art. Cool. And yeah, for me, um, I would say that uh, the easiest way to get in touch with us would be darkwebcomics underscore on Instagram. That's the easiest way to see what, what Matt is working on from like an art perspective. And uh, and then for me, a good way to get into contact with me is at Twitter. It's uh, robnetstories dot dot deef um, or just at at robnet stories um i also have i just launched to try to try my way into short fiction as well so i'm writing starting to write some short fiction release it on my own sub stack called strange tales so that that's on a link on my twitter so if you're interested you know it's free free sci-fi uh another way to work on my chops right um just to kind of another style but i that way i can't hide behind matt's beautiful art so it's just all all my writing naked out there for everyone to see um, but yeah, and I, and I would say too, I offer to your to your listeners. You know, we, we'd love to give everyone three months free on the app. So I think what would be awesome is if, if I could send you the link, uh, Damon, yes. um, so that you could just have show that you know share that up with all your followers. And it's you know free three months for on on the Macroverse app. And I really would encourage everyone to to give it a shot. It's it's unlike anything you've seen from like a digital comics perspective. Yes, we will get that out there. We'll have that on the Agents of Fandom website. We will have that on our youtube page we'll have that everywhere for everyone listening guys thank you so much for taking the time you can find me on twitter at damon tweet that's not changing you can find me on instagram at damon.gram you can find me on tiktok at damon talks comics t-o-k-s talks comics and wherever else a new social media platform pops up these days i'll be there too because it's the hunger games of the social media wars and i think in the end we're all just losing <laughs> Guys, thanks again uh, for taking the time. Go to the Macroverse app and make sure you use the code for three months off because there's so much good stuff on there. 
Thanks for thank you. Yeah, Damon. thanks, Damon. Appreciate it. Thank buddy. you. Everyone, go support your old comic shop as well. Peace.